The Battle of Lübeck took place on 6 November 1806 in Lübeck, Germany between soldiers of the Kingdom of Prussia led by Gebhard Leberecht von Blücher and troops of the First French Empire under Marshals Joachim, Murat, Jean-Baptiste Bernadotte, and Nicolas Salt. In this war of the Fourth Coalition action, the French inflicted a severe defeat on the Prussians, driving them from the neutral city. Lübeck is an old Baltic seaport approximately 50 kilometers northeast of Hamburg. After their shattering defeat by Emperor Napoleon I at the Battle of Jena Auerstedt, the Prussian armies withdrew to the east bank of the Elbe River and marched northeast in an attempt to reach the Oder River. Aiming to be annihilate his opponent's forces, Napoleon launched his Grand AAR Army Acuity in a headlong pursuit. A large portion of the fleeing Prussians took refuge in the fortress of Magdeburg where they were surrounded. Another large segment was intercepted and destroyed in the Battle of Prenzlau. This event triggered a series of capitulations of Prussian troops and fortresses. Blocked from reaching the Oder, Blücher turned and raced to the west, chased by Murat, Bernadotte, and Salt. After a number of well-fought rear guard actions, Blücher's troops forced their way into the neutral city of Lübeck where they took up defensive positions. Bernadotte's soldiers broke through the city's northern defences and overwhelmed the troops facing Murat and Salt. Blücher barely escaped from the city, though most of his staff was captured and Prussian casualties were enormous. The French brutally sacked Lübeck during and after the fighting. The next day, the French trapped the surviving Prussians against the Danish frontier and compelled Blücher to surrender. The French captured a small Swedish force during the battle. Bernadotte's respectful treatment of its officers and soldiers led to that Scandinavian nation offering its crown to the French marshal. Almost four years after this battle, background, Jena auished at to Prenzlau on 14 October 1806, Napoleon crushed the Prussian field armies in the Battle of Jena auished in the chaos after the debacle, the shattered remains of the armies coalesced into several major elements. General of Infantry Frederick Lewis, Prince of Hohenlohe Ingelfingen took command of one column that retreated through the Hartz Mountains. General Lieutenant Blücher and General of Infantry Friedrich Adolf, Count von Kalkreuth, followed in Hohenlohe's wake with a 12,000-man column. These forces were trailed by 12,000 troops under General Karl August, Grand Duke of Saxe Weimar Eisenach and General Lieutenant Christian Ludwig von Winning, the last named call Mr. Jena Auerstedt. Meanwhile, the Prince of Orange surrendered at least 10,000 Prussians to Marshal Murat's cavalry corps in the capitulation of Erfurt on 16 October. The 16,000 fresh troops of the reserve commanded by Eugene Frederick Henry, Duke of Wattenberg, had remained at Halle since the 13th. On 17 October, the 20,600 men of Marshal Bernadotte's first corps mauled Wattenberg's force in the Battle of Halle. The reserve retreated to Magdeburg where it joined Hohenlohe on 20 October. Marshal Salt with the 4th Corps and Murat reached the outskirts of the city that day and demanded Hohenlohe's surrender, which he refused. On the 22nd, Sultan Marshal Michel Nee's 6th Corps invested the fortress on the west bank of the Elbe. After leaving 9,000 additional troops to man the fortress, Hohenlohe marched to the northeast via Berg Bei Magdeburg. He was soon joined by Kalkreuth who crossed the Elbe to the north at Tangermunde. Blücher moved northeast from Nordhausen, through the Hartz Mountains, past Braunschweig, and boated across the Elbe at Sandor on 24 October. Saxe Weimar marched from Bad Langensalzer to Mühlhausen, and on to Ostrode. After feinting at Magdeburg to trick Salt, he successfully reached the Elbe at Sandor. Obus Ludwig York von Wartenberg conducted a skillful action at Altenzahn on the afternoon and evening of the 26th. The Prussian rear guard held off Salt's advance guard until Saxe Weimar's troops safely reached the east bank, then York also slipped away. 
At this time, Winning took over command of the column from Saxe Weimar. Hohenler reached Neustadt and Erdos on the evening of 24 October. After he crossed the Elbe, Blücher accepted command of Hohenler as rear guard. There was a network of canals, along with the Havel River, that ran east and west roughly between the Elbe and Oder. Hohenloher's plan to send General Major Christian Ludwig Schimmelfenig von der Roy with a flying column to protect his right flank by destroying all the bridges along this stretch of water. By nightfall on 25 October, Hohenloher's main body was between Neuruppen and Lindo, a little farther east. General Major von Schwerin's cavalry and Obus von Hagen's infantry brigade marched toward Wittstock. General Major Rudolf Ernst Christoph von Bieler reached Kiritz, north of Neustadt, with a cavalry infantry brigade. Blücher's rear guard was near Neustadt after a clash with Bernadotte's leading troops. In an ominous development, French cavalry seized Orenienburg before Schimmelfenig arrived there. On 26 October, Murat routed Schimmelfenig's column at Zedernik sending the Prussians fleeing to Stettin after losing more than 250 cavalry from their 1,300-man force. On 28 October, Murat attacked the Prussians in the Battle of Prenzlau. One of General of Division Emanuel Grouchy's dragoon brigades hewed a path through Hohenloher's column. General of Division Marc Antoine de Beaumont and his 3rd Dragoon Division pounced on the now isolated rear guard under Obus Prince Augustus of Prussia and forced it to surrender. Murat then succeeded in bluffing Hohenler into capitulating, even though the Prussian was neither surrounded nor outnumbered. Not including 2,000 previous losses, about 10,000 soldiers, 64 guns, and 1,800 cavalry horses fell into the hands of the French. Prenzlau to Lübeck the next day, 4,000 Prussians surrendered to two French light cavalry brigades in the capitulation of Passwalk. That night General of Brigade Antoine LaSalle and his light cavalry accepted the capitulation of Stettin after bluffing the fortress commander into surrendering with over 5,000 troops. In the wake of these humiliating defeats, a number of smaller Prussian columns were mopped up. On 30 October, Major von Hopfner surrendered an artillery convoy with 600 soldiers, 25 guns, 48 wagons, and 800 horses at Balderkoff south of Anklim. Bieler, his older brother General Major Karl Anton Ernst von Bieler, and the 2,173 troops laid down their arms at Anklim to General of Division Nicholas Leonard Becker's dragoons on 1 November. That day also saw the fortress of Kustrin capitulate to one of Marshal Louis Davout's 3rd Corps brigades. Leaving Ney to carry out the siege of Magdeburg, Salt crossed the Elbe at Tangermunda and headed northeast. He reached Wusterhausen near Neustadt on 30 October, with his cavalry probing toward Wittstock. Farther to the east, Bernadotte captured a Prussian supply convoy and 20 field pieces on the 26th and reached Boitzenberg on the evening of the 29th of October. The next morning, finding that Blücher had veered northwest, he marched toward Neustelitz, leading one of Bernadotte's cavalry regiments. Colonel Etienne Maurice Gerard captured 400 troops belonging to Blücher and reported that the Prussian was making for Warren. On 31 October, the columns of Blücher and Winning met near Warren. Winning wanted to escape to the port of Rostock to the north, and had already sent General Major Karl Georg Friedrich von Wobeser ahead to organize the evacuation. However, Blücher overruled him and proceeded with his own strategy, which was to recross the Elbe at Boisenberg. From there, he planned to either join with General Karl Ludwig von Lecoq in the former electorate of Hanover or Lieutenant General Franz Casimir von Kleistet, Magdeburg. Blücher reorganized his small army into two corps. Winning led the 11,000-strong 1st Corps, while Blücher commanded the 10,000-man 2nd Corps. Each corps was subdivided into two heavy and one light divisions. 
At this time, there were 47,252 Frenchmen hunting for Blücher. Bernadotte's 1st Corps numbered 15,450, Salt's 4th Corps counted 24,375, General of Division Louis Michel Antoine Sahouk led 2,550 Dragoons. Grouchy had 2,432 dragoons, LaSalle counted 785 light cavalry, and General of Division Jean-Joseph Ange Dortpool led 1,660 cuirassiers. Bernadotte pressed ahead with 12,000 of his most fit troops, leaving the rest behind. Murat and his cavalry were rapidly moving west from their victories at Prenzlau and Stettin. On the morning of 1 November, the Prussians evacuated Warren. Blücher moved to the northwest covered by a rearguard under General Major Friedrich Gottlieb von Oswald, winning March due west covered by Oberst August Wilhelm von Pletz's rearguard. That morning the Prussians brawled near Warren with both Salts and Bernadotte's light cavalry brigades plus General of Division and Jean-Marie René. Savary's 1st Hussar and 7th Chasseurs a Cheval regiments before falling back to the west. Under York's tactical direction the three Fusilier battalions, six Jaeger companies, and 20 squadrons of Hussars gave a good account of themselves in the Battle of Warren-Nostantin. Though Bernadotte committed General of Division Jean-Baptiste Drouet, Comte Erland's division to the capture of Nostantin village, York and Pletz drew off in good order to Altschweren that night. On the morning of 2 November, Sahuk's 4th Dragoon Division set out from Rathenau and Murat left Demon sweeping west with LaSalle, Grouchy, and Dortpool. Bernadotte was at Narsenton and Salt at Warren. That day near Granzine, Drouet's division caught up with the 500 men of the 2nd Battalion of the Chammer Infantry Regiment near 27, inflicting a loss of one cannon and 57 casualties, including Major Puck Hammer captured. Away to the northeast on 2 and 3 November, the port of Wilgas surrendered to the 22nd Dragoon Regiment of General of Brigade André Joseph Busset's Brigade. Hohenloher's baggage train with 2,500 mostly non-combatants thus fell into the hands of Grouchy's division. Oswald's rear guard made the stand at Krivitz on 3 November in an action called a Prussian victory. The Prussian led the Fusilier battalions Greifenberg near 4, nor near 12, and Oswald near 16, the Grenadier battalions Schmeling and Viereg, and one horse artillery battery. His cavalry units were the Hertzberg Dragoon Regiment near 9, 5 squadrons, and the Rudolf Hussar Regiment near 2, 5 squadrons. The French foot soldiers were from Bernadotte's 2nd Division under General of Division Olivier Macou Rivaud de la Raffinière, Generals of Brigade Michel Marie Pacted and Nicolas Joseph Maison led the 8th Light and the 45th and 54th Line Infantry Regiments. These were supported by the 2nd and 4th Hussar and 5th Chasseur a Cheval Regiments under General of Brigade Jacques Louis Francois de Lestida, Tilly plus one horse and one foot artillery batteries. All told, there were 6,500 Frenchmen and 12 guns. Maison drove Oswald's troops out of Krivitz after a tough fight. At first, the Prussians fell back to high ground behind the village, then continued their retreat. General of Brigade Pierre Watt here galloped forward from the village with the light cavalry. Watt here summoned the Prussians to surrender, but their response was a charge by dragoons. The French horsemen unwisely opened fire with their carbines and were swept away by Oswald's counter-attack. Gerard was captured and Bernadotte had to take shelter inside of an infantry square. The dragoons were finally halted by Pacted's infantry. Later that evening, the French were able to seize the village of Meuse near Schwerin. During the action, the French cut off and wiped out the 1st Battalion of the Arnhem Infantry Regiment near 13 at Pinot. By 4 November Sahuk and Murat nearly caught up with Salt and Bernadotte. After receiving a false report that Salt was between him and Bo Eisenberg, Blücher decided to fall back from Schwerin to Gadbusch. 
site of a battle in 1712, on the 4th Obus Christian Friedrich von der Osten with a dragoon regiment, a Fusilier battalion, and one company of Jaegers joined Blücher from Le Coq's Gore at Hameln. Wobiser also rejoined with his column. On the 5th, Savary's two regiments caught up with another stray Prussian force under General Major Friedrich Leopold Karl Bernhard von Usedom at the port of Wismar. The Frenchman claimed that he captured 700 cavalry, while the Prussians admitted surrendering 367 troopers. The Prussians belonged to the Usedom Hussar Regiment near Ten and part of Blutcher's wagon train under Major Panwitz. By this time, Blutcher's force was reduced to around 16,000 to 17,000 soldiers, though he possessed 100 artillery pieces and the Gadbush position was strong. The Prussian declined battle because his troops were hungry and worn out by constant marching. He determined to fall back to the Hanseatic city-state of Lübeck, where he hoped to join a force of Swedes that he knew were in the area. The Prussian army appeared before neutral Lübeck on the morning of 5 November. At midday, they forced their way through the southern gate and occupied the city. Addressing the city senate in the Rathors, Blücher demanded large amounts of food, drink, fodder, and currency for his army, but promised not to fight in the city. Meanwhile, a brigade of 1,800 Swedes had entered Lübeck on 31 October, hoping to secure some transport vessels to carry them home. When they finally boarded ship on the 4th, they found themselves trapped in the Traver River by contrary winds. Aiming to capture the Swedes, Bernadotte sent one battalion to the mouth of the Traver and another detachment under Maison to Schlutup, which is on the Traver downstream from the city. Also on the 5th, Salt attacked one of Blutch's rear guards under General Major Karl Gerhard von Pellet at Rogendorf, driving it away to the south of Lübeck. Salt pressed on and captured 300 Prussians at Ratzeburg. He and Murat were poised to advance on Lübeck from the south. A Danish force commanded by Lieutenant General Johann Abeld marched towards Stockelsdorf. Ewald notified Blücher that he was prepared to defend his nation's neutrality by force. 